Hey there, it's Mike. Thanks for checking out this video. And today I'm going to be discussing projects in street photography. And I think projects are great, uh, especially when you're sort of stuck in a creative rut and you're just kind of going out and not really finding stuff. And you come back and you're kind of disheartened and you know, you're just, you're kind of going out there in general and just hoping something grabs your interest. And I think projects help you to narrow down see things differently you know projects are essentially you know themes ideas repeated subject matter that you, you find yourself either drawn to or something that you've decided that you're going to look for um, sort of ahead of time so um, they definitely can can help you see things differently you end up taking photos that you know you probably wouldn't have before because they fit your idea your theme and you know there's there's a lot of different ways you can look at this because i think one of the things I love about street photography that I've mentioned is that, you know, subject matter and ideas are endless. And so because of that project ideas can be endless. And the obvious one is like subject matter. And we're going to go to my desktop here in a few minutes and we'll look at some projects that I have that, you know, you either currently working on or have worked on or should be working on or all three or whatever. Um, but subject matter is kind of the one where people just, you know, they look for maybe signs or they look for animals. Or I know that one I've mentioned before where, where it was garbage. What, what interesting garbage. How do I photograph garbage in an interesting way on the street? Um, and so subject matter is an easy one. But there's other things like, like shapes. Like where, where can you find triangles? Or I knew someone that was doing hearts. Like hearts. That would be hard. Or where do you find X's or whatever? Um, and so you can have shapes. You can also have colors. I know I have one. I, I haven't really worked on or look, looked for it specifically in a while, but um, I have a folder called yellow and I look for things that are yellow. And they're definitely photos that, you know, as part of a project, they make sense, but maybe in and of themselves aren't the greatest photo, but as a part of an overall large project, they, they make sense. And so, you know, you can look at you can look at colors. I think another interesting thing that you could do would be look at like camera height or perspective. You know, maybe you have a project where um, everything is taken with the camera on the ground. You're going to shoot everything at ground level. What does that look like? What does the street look like? Maybe you shoot everything with a fisheye lens. That's your project. You know, you're going to shoot 12 millimeter or whatever. You know, what would that, what could you come up with that's interesting? with a fisheye lens on the street. So there's equipment choices, there's perspective, there's, um, there's subject matter, there's colors, there's shapes. And I think it, it can really help you as a street photographer sort of narrow down in, in focus, no pun intended, on, on something that you're, you're always kind of keeping your eye out for. And I think you either stumble into projects like I have, like most of my projects are things that I've stumbled into because I just found myself I keep photographing them because I find it interesting. And I think there's other projects where you maybe see somebody else's work or, um, you know, you see, you see a photo book that, you know, is maybe centered around a, a project or a theme. And you kind of, you come up with that idea before you've even taken one shot for that project. And I know for me, like having projects are great because they help me when I'm putting my books together. Cause then I can have some theme or themes, you know, in my second book, I know, you know, I have self portraits, I have arrows, I have windows, uh, things like that. And so I think it helps me putting together a body of work because I can have these sub themes within my book, which are essentially just maybe my best or favorite photos of a certain project that, you know, I'm cur currently working on. So uh, I definitely recommend that, you know, you look into projects, Maybe you, you know, go downtown, go to your area or whatever, and just sort of do a scavenger hunt of projects and maybe something will, will click. Or you look at the stuff that's in your, what do you have, you know, saved already that you kind of find certain themes that you can look for. And some photos, as we'll see when we go through my stuff, can actually fit two different themes. You know, one could be you know, hey, I photograph reflections, but I also do self-portraits. And you might have one that fulfills both, or maybe it has a color and there's a self-portrait and it's in the same photo. So that's kind of cool too when you get when you get sort of one picture that can fit into two different projects. So anyway, 
Uh, but let's head to my desktop. We'll take a look at some stuff. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do that. Check out my links below, all that other stuff. We'll head to the desktop right now. One of the first projects that I started doing before I even knew about projects probably were mannequins. I love mannequins. This is one of the first mannequins I've ever photographed. I just really like the uh, building in the background, the pose, the sunglasses. I've sold this one um, at least two or three times in different sizes. This is my most my most popular mannequin print that I've sold. I can't. I've lost track. Um, only image I have that's not color or black and white. This is like a sepia or Ambrose color. Just, you know, part of the mannequin. I like a little bit of the reflection. Um, just the hat, the dress, everything just worked really well. Simple black and white one. Just really like the hat and how it covers up part of the eye and the pose. Just very neat. Again, just part of the mannequin. Don't need the whole thing. Just really like that eye peering out. Kind of creepy. This is uh, just an interesting, like the pose. It looks like a birthmark by the nose and just the, the yellow A and the yellow on the shirt. This is a great example of an image that is in my mannequin folder, but could also go into my project for the color yellow, which we'll see in a little bit. This is great because it's a mannequin, but at first glance, you, you probably don't know. I mean, it could be a person and just like how the hair is covering everything. This is really neat. I just like the texture on the face and just the layering, the foreground, the background kind of stuff, the hat. This was just a mannequin head that was in a bin at a Goodwill outlet store. I just thought it was funny. And so I took a picture of that. This is neat. I really like the red shoes. They really pop. The legs are all beat up. There's all sort of, sorts of marks in there. The reflection of the cars across the street. Just a lot of neat stuff going on there. This one was just more about the building across the street. I mean, it kind of gives this mannequin this Frankenstein kind of look almost. And this was just, I like the, the red Pepsi and the red in the Wisconsin sweatshirt. And then you have the woman um, kind of reflected walking uh, towards the mannequin. So that is uh, my mannequin stuff. Another project I have is self-portraits. Some of these I actually shoot like on real estate gigs. They're not really even like street photography, but I still put them in my projects folder. And this is just me off of a off of a dock photographing the backyard, a waterfront property. Just really love this dirty window, all messed up and just taking myself out of focus, shooting that. Same idea here, except for it wasn't a window. It was like, it was like some really, really reflective metal piece of art artwork, the sculpture, the structure. I love double reflections. If I can get a mirror, myself in the mirror and the window. Um, really like doing stuff like that. This one's cool. This was in my first book, actually. I try to kind of split this down the middle. You have me off to the left. You can see me taking a vertical. There's two people with me on that left side. And then the right side is just kind of more about the sign and the arrows pointing in different directions. This is just a simple one I did. Um, in fall, very recently. It's more about the pumpkins. A nice shadow one with a lamp post to get another vertical. Here's me. I put I put leaves, surrounded my my whole shadow with leaves there. This one's neat because I'm you know bigger than the mannequin. I showed up here on the right hand side, and here's the mannequin. This is the mannequin that was um, in the photo that I showed a couple minutes ago, with the kind of the beat up face that was layered. This was a fisheye lens. I actually, I think I've only shot street photography with a fisheye lens once. And I did this because I really liked trying to get as much as I could as across the street. And then the doors leading to this building that I'm photographing the woman walking through. This is neat because it's a reflection and it's a shadow at the same time. It's a shadow and a reflection. That, that's just, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. And here's just a simple one. You know in the snow with footprints going through kind of like that one didn't make my second book but now that i look at it i kind of like it maybe maybe i'll put it in my third book so um one that i don't work on very often and don't look for and i should more is just is yellow the color yellow and this isn't the greatest shop i just i like the you know you can see parts of two people and then you have the dominant color the yellow linen bin this the first thing i noticed was yellow i mean that's why it's in the in my project folder for yellow this is actually in my second book 
yellow wall, yellow taxis, the, the texture, the peeling paint. Just a simple repetition of, you know, yellow tomatoes at the farmer's market. This one, I'm not sure if it qualifies. I don't know if that's fluorescent yellow or is it fluorescent green? I'm not sure, but it just, it really popped. And uh, that ended up being in my first book. This isn't the greatest shot in the world, but, you know, a lot of yellow going on. The yellow arrow pointing toward the guy in the cross world, crosswalk, which I thought was kind of neat. And this is just, again, this is like the yellow tomatoes one. This is just about yellow and repetition. So that was that's my short kind of yellow project. Again, I need to work on that more. My favorite project, maybe one of my favorite subject matters in general, are umbrellas. So um, when it's raining out, especially in fall, things like that, I'm always looking to go downtown, get some umbrellas. Even if it's just an umbrella being carried, just like all the, the you know, the black here going on and sort of it being divided between the concrete and the grass. Again, another fall one. Um, this was actually in a point of view video you may have seen that I did a couple months ago. This is one of the first umbrella shots I, I did, and I just, I love the green. This is an example of one where I just really cropped tight. You'd be surprised at the original shot here, how far away I was. I just, I really kept cropping down and down and further on on that one. This is a neat one that is that is sold, you know, two, three times at art shows. Just shot this one this year, actually. Um, just really nice, just someone standing there um, looking out over the bridge. This was the image that helped me discover Saul Leiter, actually. It's one of the first, um, maybe the first layered rainy window shot I ever took and got this lady with this white umbrella walking by, one of my favorites still to this day. This is cool because I got two umbrellas. There are, there's a little bit of a gap there, but the reason I love this is that this guy in front, all in black, is carrying some sort of red sweatshirt or he's carrying something red. And it's the exact same red, almost the exact same red as the umbrella in the lower left. And that just ties it together. I love that shot. Here's one of these kind of, it's kind of a saw lighter-ish, like put the main subject just really down into the corner here. This is basically a tree, but the red umbrella makes you go to that corner. Here's one just framed through to a lot of branches and trees. Love the reflection here. All these different umbrellas, some close, some far away, just a nice color palette. And this one was shot through uh, like a canopy and a cover or a, a back of a canopy and the actual canopy cover at a farmer's market. So there are some projects that, that I have that I do. You know, I have a color like yellow. I have subject matter like mannequins and umbrellas. And then I just have self portraits where I try to put myself and stuff. So I think projects can be great for just helping you to focus, get you out of a creative rut, just help you see things differently. And um, so I hope that helps you out. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Check out my links below. We'll catch you soon with another video. Thanks. Bye-bye.